Welcome to the final episode of our micro RPG series, everyone. We've had a lot of fun with this series so far, and we're really excited to showcase these next couple of games for you um, from James D'Amato's book, The Ultimate Micro RPG Book. Before we get to the episode, though, announcements. Mm. So there are only a couple more days left on the Academon Kickstarter. As of last week, when we recorded this, uh, they were steadily making their way to the finish line uh, to make the event viable. So head right to the Kickstarter page in the show notes, if you haven't already, and toss some support their way, uh, especially if they have not funded yet. Uh, if you aren't going but want to support a great small convention with a ton of heart, uh, you can donate a game for $5, you can sponsor a table for $25, uh, and and use that sponsorship to show off your uh, the game that you're making or your podcast, uh, whatever creative stuff, or or maybe boost somebody else's uh, mm -hmm. stuff. That'd be kind of cool too. Um, if you do want to attend, there's uh, single day badges, full weekend passes uh, for players and GMs alike. Um, and if Amelia and I are able to attend, uh, we will be doing a character creation cast panel again where we, we are going to be working with the audience to create random characters, uh, which really went over well the, the first and last time that we've done it. <laughs> it was so much fun. We just pulled a bunch of random tables from all over the place and then tried to make something coherent out of it. And it was and, a good time. And Yeah, and I, I understand we have a lot more random tables now. Yes, um, I am the proud owner of many random tables. <laughs> yes, so uh, so the shenanigans are going to be through the roof next time, so definitely check that out uh, if everything lines up correctly. Um, I'll probably be running a couple games as well of Chimera as usual. Uh, it's my staple game that I do uh, every time I go. Um, and we're probably going to be done with the latest version, version 0.8 by then, so uh, really excited for that. Speaking of supporting cool things, the One Shot Network Patreon is going to be getting a lot more bonus content, hopefully. Um, we already put some in there very recently. For $5 and up patrons, you get access to the Secret Archive bonus episodes. Um, in our case, you will be able to hear Ryan, me, and Grant Howitt um, expand on our characters from our Spire series as James... D'Amato leads us through some exercises from his character backstory guide. Mm -hmm. um, this was at Gen Con in 2019, back when people went places and did things. Mm -hmm. uh, we had so much fun with it. Um, there was a lot of in-depth discussion about artisanal mayo, yeah. from what I remember. Um, but besides that, there'll be another bonus episode coming out soon. We just finished recording it. Mm -hmm. um, our hope is that going forward... Every month or so, you'll have a little a little something extra from us in the secret archive. Mm -hmm. um, we will next month. Um, it'll be another game from the ultimate micro RPG guide because we had so much fun yeah. doing those. Absolutely, doing those games. Yeah, and and that's all we really had for announcements today. Uh, so enjoy the show, everybody. Oh, it's a good one. It's so good. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> it's so good. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan, and this episode my co-host Amelia and I are excited to welcome, again, nobody else, uh, just us. Just us. Yep. Uh, we've got a small cast today because we are discussing uh, a selection of games from the ultimate micro rpg book that's right we are covering a multitude of games this series each episode has been covering two games from the book um so it's a total of six games this month we are covering the last two in this series mm -hmm. um heartbeats a game of medical drama by keith baker and jen ellis and post-match interview 
a game where you ask tired people surreal questions by James Mendez Hotz. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited to dive into these because uh, what a, what a difference of uh, I guess tone. I mean, they're both kind of absurdist and funny, right? Tone is funny for both of them. I mean, so far, I, I feel like everything but that one has been <laughs> like we mostly like we mostly picked fun games. It, um, it's almost with the like... exception of our creepy child uh, that wasn't <laughs> a ghost. But we did not correctly. Yeah. No, oh, I'm sure. Uh, I mean, we turned one of the games into a weird, funny game, uh, Going Dark. Uh, oh, yeah, that, that one's maybe supposed to be serious. Maybe you're not supposed to be about Yeah, teams. I mean, that looks like a cool action-adventure, adventurous one uh, is the tone. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I, I'm down for, for what's in store for us uh, today. Uh, Heartbeats. What's in a game? Mm-hmm. A game of medical drama by Keith Baker and Jen Ellis. Now, we didn't uh, select the games based on who wrote the games. We just uh, kind of picked out which ones uh, appealed to us. And, and I guess I just realized we picked out two games by Keith Baker and Jen Ellis for this series. We did. We kind of went through and picked the ones that had like a little bit more robust of a character creation or mm-hmm. like more for us to kind of do in that you know character world kind yeah, of absolutely. creation because a lot of them are just like sit down and play mm-hmm. um so yeah so uh that. so for this game uh we need some playing cards mm-hmm. uh jokers removed mm-hmm. uh and the tags on the game it's a modern genre the tone is funny uh it's a gmless game uh content of melodrama absurdism and goofs Yeah, so it says Heartbeats is a hip medical drama, and it's time to create the next episode. Mm. You're a doctor balancing the intense demands of your private life and the needs of your patients, but you're also a patient of one of the other doctors. The audience expects tension and drama. It's time to push the boundaries of modern medicine and maybe make out with a bitter rival in the on-call room. Yeah, so this is is really, uh, you know, Grey's Anatomy-esque, right? Right, yeah. Um, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of good stuff in here. General so. Hospital. General, oh my goodness. That, is that, it, that one's That's a callback. Not, that's, a, that's a soap that's, opera. That's an old one, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like an old, like daytime. Yeah. Soap. Yeah. I think I remember General Hospital crossing over with one of my mom's regular soap operas back in the day. Yeah. I don't think my mom had like regular soap operas, but like when she did watch, she watched General Hospital. There you go. So... Yeah, so first thing we're going to do here is we are going to create a doctor. Let's create a doctor. Let's make some people. Mm -hmm. You start by choosing your specialty and a defining trait. Okay. We are going to do by pulling cards here. Oh, hey, I need my my Sailor Moon deck. Your trusty Sailor Moon deck? My trusty uh, holographic Sailor Moon deck. Man, I need a better deck of cards. I've just got some classic bicycle playing cards. I got these um, like 20 years ago in college, and they're still in pristine condition because I don't use them for anything. They just sit in a case. Can you like just open them for our Unbound series? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, I've looked through them before, uh, so they were opened at one point. Oh, okay. But um, no, they weren't sealed or anything. But yeah. Yeah, I'd love a good, I need like a good deck of playing cards. I'm still on the lookout. Uh, listeners, if you know of a tarot deck that is Sailor Moon themed, uh, mm-hmm. that is of decent quality, uh, please let me know. Because yeah, goodness. I think I've seen a couple on Etsy, but they're only like the major arcana. Yeah, I want the whole thing. Yeah. I'm a little greedy, but you know, I don't want to just get just the major arcana as cool Sailor Moon. Yeah. I want, I want everything. And I'm very surprised there's not an official one out there. Yeah, that or, does seem like bananas. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, a doctor. So we have to do what? We have to pull cards for our, our gonna, specialty. Yeah, we're going to start with our specialty and our defining trait. Well, wonderful. All right. My doctor specialty is a psychiatrist. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I got sports medicine. Ooh. 
All right. Interesting. Okay. Defining trait. What'd you get? Um, I got addict, but I am not comfortable with that, so I am going to draw again. There you go. Is there more on the other page? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Turn the page. Queen. Brilliant. Brilliant. Nice. Um, I got reckless. Ooh. That's a I good want one. Reckless sports medicine doctor. Yeah. Maybe you like like skydiving and like you're kind of a daredevil. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I guess it depends Maybe not. on I don't know. Right. <laughs> um, so following this, determine your relationship to the doctor on your left um, and work with that player to determine the details. So um, we pull a card for... For each other, right? For each other, yes. So my Ooh. relationship to you is bitter enemies. <laughs> bitter enemies? Oh, what a shock. Oh, wow. That's, that's on brand for you. I yep. pulled dating. <gasps> enemies to lovers <laughs> that's amazing joke. that's yeah okay, okay so um this is work with the player to determine the details if you're related are you a parent or child identical twins if you're former lovers who broke it off um so let's talk about um because it does say actually that you can you can make these up or you can draw cards right. for them. Obviously, right. if there's a random table, we're going to do that because it's just who we are. So let's talk about this. How are we both bitter enemies and... And dating. And dating. What if um, we are, like, we've been dating, right, for mm -hmm. a while on the show. And mm -hmm. then some stuff came up that, like, there's obviously still that love there, but, like... We're just at each other's throats right now because of something. Mm. Like something's getting between us that's... That like could be the thing that tears us apart? Right. Yeah. Okay. And like the whole drama around it is can they prevail over this uh, potential disaster? Okay. I have another suggestion. Like yours sure. is good. Um, what if... Yeah. There's also like these like call-in shows <laughs> that are hosted by doctors but like it's you don't use your real like doctor name you know mm. you're just like dr steve you know yeah. like just your first name or something like that. okay but like we have competing shows oh but we don't know who the other person is oh so it's like we're just anonymous like right but like you are like my nemesis radio host but you don't know it's me <laughs> Because, you like know, like, constantly. obviously, you can't recognize my voice, um, and I can't recognize you if you put on a fake mustache, you know, because mm -hmm. um, this is a soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, so I mean, it, yours is also, like, less ridiculous, to be fair. Yours right. is much more dramatic. Um, I, I do love, um, like, podcast enemies. I mean, and it doesn't have to be that. I just like the idea that it's like we're doing something anonymously and oh, we're yeah, like yeah. rivals, but we don't know that it's the other person. Because, okay, what was your specialty Maybe like again? Maybe it's like, oh, like published articles in a journal or something. Yeah, you said you were a psychiatrist, right? I'm a psychiatrist, yeah. Okay, and I do sports medicine. Right. So you're not competing for patients or anything. No. Um, yeah, maybe yours makes more sense. Okay. Okay. What would... What would uh, what would tear us uh, to become bitter enemies of one another? Hmm. Do you think it's like some kind of ethical dilemma? Ooh. Oh, what if I'm being too reckless uh, with like some m big uh, trial? Mm. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm skirting the ethics a little bit. Yeah. You are not following good clinical practice. Yeah. And, uh, and like, you found out about it and you don't want to betray the trust of our relationship um, by, you know, telling on me, but you're, you're like trying to convince me to stop doing that and kind of uh, turn, turn myself in for, for lack of better word, you know? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Okay. I like that's, that a lot. That's full of drama. Yeah. But I think it's very much like, 
Well, I guess you're reckless, so you can decide. I was going to say, it's very much like, this is, you know, like, I'm doing what I have to do for my patients, you yeah. know? Um, <laughs> but, like, like, no, you can't. I, I know the manual says only put it up to 10, but I'm going to 11. <laughs> you can't get around the randomization. You have to, it has to be a double-blind, placebo-controlled trial. <laughs> That's bollocks, and you know it. They make you take that GCP course every three years for a reason. <laughs> I was only attending remotely last time. It's always online. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. You just have to read the web page first. <laughs> so we are bitter enemies because of this, this big trial that, if it's successful, will bring in a ton of money for the hospital. Mm, mm -hmm. So, like, it, it'll be good for all of us, right? Right. So, what's what's wrong with a little bit of, uh, you know, forgetting some paperwork here and there? So much. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so much. <laughs> Amelia, the regulatory coordinator, has <laughs> significant times right now. Like, you can't, you can't cheat. You, just, you can't <laughs> do that. You can't. Uh, you can't. <laughs> uh, you are my enemy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <gasps> oh boy okay wonderful okay so next step um oh do we have to we have to do names now don't we uh hold on okay hold on. uh traits and relationships draw a card blah 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 now flesh out your character uh what's your name what do you look like what's your name what's how your long name? have you been at the hospital okay well i have my name books right here <laughs> all right so we'll start with names Mm -hmm. Um, it's a good doctor name. Okay, my doctor's name is the Doctor Emery Swift. Ooh, my doctor's name is Doctor Jennifer Owen. Ooh, wonderful. Emery and Jennifer. Okay, so what do we look like? Um, well, obviously it's a medical drama, so we are conventionally attractive. <laughs> yes, uh, conventionally attractive. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to define that at all, because <laughs> I am not comfortable <laughs> being the one to say it, but I'm just going to say conventionally attractive. Uh-huh. Well, yeah. <laughs> Whatever it's... that means to you, dear listener. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I mean, m my doctor's probably uh, fairly muscular to, to do sports medicine. Right. Uh, for physical therapy and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I can add that in there. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm a brilliant psychiatrist, so obviously I have, like, some sexy cat eye glasses or something. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> Not my current psychiatrist, but the one I had before that was, like, the most fashionable woman I've ever met. Mm. Like, she always looked so good. It's <laughs> always jealous of her. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm going to be extremely fashionable. There you go. Conventionally attractive, extremely fashionable. Mm -hmm. Wears glasses. Um, yeah. You wear scrubs, but they're always, like, kind of tight to, like, show off your muscles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the writers, for whatever reason, they, they keep on writing uh, scenes where I have to have my shirt off. Gosh. <laughs> That's so <laughs> weird. <laughs> hmm. All right. I think that's uh, a pretty decent enough uh, picture <laughs> for our characters. Yes. Um, you can fill in the blanks. Oh, how, how long have you been at the hospital? Yes. How long have we been? Um, gosh. I want to say, like, my character's been there for a while. I was going to say, like, 10 years seems reasonable. Yeah. Because, um, like, I'm willing to take these risks because, like, I've been here quite a while. Yeah. How about yourself? Yeah, I think 10 years. 10 I think, years. Like, Ooh. I've got an established practice, and, you know, but it's not, like, so long that I don't care anymore, you know? Yeah. <laughs> what if we did our, uh, like, our residency here together or something like that? Oh, yeah. We've known each other for, like, a long time. Yeah. Have we been dating for a long time? Um, or is this, like, the first real test of our relationship? God, no, I think this is, like, um, like, if this is the Grey's Anatomy equivalent... Like we Nobody dates for very long. Like, we didn't start dating until um, probably five years into working here. Okay. Like, there was this whole, like, 
Uh, oh, so there know, was like five seasons they? of Will They Won't They? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and then something dramatic happened in, in season six that that brought us together. And we've been an inseparable since until... Uh, there was the, a patient that had a traumatic sports injury. Yeah, and, and this, um, this medical trial uh, to try to fix that. I yeah. guess we can, uh, we might be able to uh, fit that in with the patient twist that we have to pull. Uh, yeah, let's up find soon. out. All right. So we got our doctors. Mm-hmm. Now we have to, now we have to create a patient. Yes. Do we each create a patient or just like, is it one for the. In Heartbeats, you play two characters, your doctor and the patient of the doctor to your left. Oh, okay. So I'm playing your patient. Yeah. Oh, <gasps> okay. This Figure is very that doctor's good. specialty and decide what brought you in. Draw a card and consult the table if you'd like to add a twist. Obviously, I want to add a twist. Of course you want to add a twist. Okay, okay. I'm going to... I'm actually going to pull the twist first so that I can kind of... Me too, because I have no idea. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. What was yours? Okay, I got a uh, possible criminal. Ooh, I got financial slash legal complications. Ooh. Okay, so um, if you are a psychiatrist... And you are seeing a possible criminal. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it sounds like I think this is somebody that um, that wants to uh, kind of like they're they're struggling with things in life and they want to get some therapy in order to uh, kind of get things in a row, like turn things around. Yeah, turn things around, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um. And they're also a criminal, but they don't tell you that. Oh, what kind of criminal? Ooh, that's a good question. Should we go like like really uh, dramatic and say like uh, like serial killer? Whoa! I mean, probably right. Right. So that like adds so much tension to the scenes that they're in with you because it's just you and them in an office. But like, and they killed their last psychiatrist. Oh, are they a psychiatrist hunter? Oh my god! Like they get help from the psychiatrist, and after they they've gotten helped enough, they... how have they not caught this guy yet? I know <laughs> it's a very specific mo, isn't it? Right. <laughs> and like, you have to give all of your information when you go to see a doctor. Like mm-hmm. they they have, hmm. although they don't. You know, it is really hard to get a patient list for evidence. That's true. They don't just hand that over to anybody. <laughs> so you've got a you've got a serial killer, a secret serial killer uh, patient mm-hmm. uh, that's there for just some life advice. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Nothing, oh. nothing malicious. Sir. We must be approaching a season finale here. Yeah. <laughs> so I am a patient with financial slash legal complications. Okay. Um. So. Is this clinical trial like the only way for me to get this treatment? Yeah, I mean because the way like <laughs> well fact, the way a lot of those clinical trials work is that like they whoever's sponsoring the trial has to pay for whatever the investigational mm-hmm. thing is, device or drug or whatever. Yeah. Um and insurance doesn't have to is not responsible for that. Okay. Um so like that trial might be the only way for them to get that or get like any treatment, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause obviously a trial is always going to be the only way you can get that particular treatment, but mm-hmm. um, to get any treatment at all. Yeah. Um, and this is a deadly sports injury, <laughs> I guess <laughs> trying to make it more dramatic. Um, well, I mean, sports, sports therapists don't always, uh, they'll do like other physical therapy and stuff too, usually. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be just sports, but maybe it's ma- a sports related head injury, though. Oh, maybe. But and like the 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 league is denying that it happened yes. on, on the field. And, right. And this person like can't work anymore. They can't so like yeah. can't, can't keep playing. And they it's don't an have athlete, it, obviously. Yeah. yeah and so. they don't have enough money uh, to go after the league because right. how, how are you supposed to finance against right. a force like that. And you definitely planned to play like another five or six years. Yeah. And um, and this was like your rookie year, uh, this person's rookie year, maybe. Oof. 
Yeah, so this trial is, like, the only way to get it. And then, of course, like, there's, if it's randomized, there's no guarantee that you'll get it. So maybe that's what you're doing is, like, sort of, like, faking that to make sure that they all get the treatment. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise, if it's double blind, they they might get a placebo and Mm -hmm. what's the point, right? Right, right. Man, America. Yeah. <laughs> NFL. Okay. What? I'm sorry. Or other some other sports organization. <laughs> yep. C- could be anything. Cool. Oh, this is <gasps> This is ripe for uh ripe for drama. Uh mm-hmm. ripe for shenanigans. This is great. I don't think I could easily play um a a secret serial killer uh seeing my psychiatrist, but creating the character was uh was really interesting. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. I, I like I like that it's you can be like, okay, it's a soap opera. It's like what is the most dramatic thing or like it's a mm-hmm. serial drama. Like what is the most ridiculous thing that I can do that like will yeah. cause what will cause the biggest problem <laughs> <laughs> that we can leave <laughs> on a cliffhanger. Yeah, exactly. Uh it's it's really cool. Um so we did it. We created our people. Um, oh, I bet because of our fight, I don't believe you when you tell me this person's a serial killer. Oh, yeah. Like I, maybe I picked up on some like clues or something like that. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh, that's very good. That's very good. My goodness. That's very good. All right. So uh, basically, uh, what happens from here for the gameplay uh, is you—you you, uh, each turn is a scene involving your character. Uh, you have two storylines you can explore: your relationship uh, with uh, the other doctor to your left, uh, and treating the patient to your right. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, so if the, it were in a group, they wouldn't be the same, right? Person. Um, yeah. But that's kind of cool that you can you can do this two player and and have that sort of experience. Yeah. Um it's interesting because you you kind of set where you are, uh how things begin, um draw a card and and reveal it once you establish the scene and that determines your progress. Uh so a red card means things are going to go the way you want them to go and a black card is a negative outcome. Um a face card means that there's a new dramatic uh development or sudden emergency and uh then you play it out. That's really cool. I do love that it says, don't worry about realism. We know neurosurgeons don't perform brain transplants, but in this very special episode of Heartbeats, Dr. Dirk Rockwell has to perform two of them. (laughs) That's lovely. I kind of want to uh, draw a card uh, for each of our scenes just to see kind of uh, what it would have turned out to be a bit. Yeah. So, ooh, oh no. Oh no! What? what? <laughs> I drew a uh, king of clubs, okay. so black king. So it's a negative outcome, and it's a dramatic new development or sudden emergency. Ooh! So is that for for me, the patient, with you, or is this me, the doctor? I don't know. Oh, I sh- I probably should have uh, selected. Your relationship with the other doctor or treating the patient. Well, let's do both, huh? Yeah. So this this would apply to our relationship. Oh, okay. So it's it's what like a negative outcome and a dramatic development. Yeah, it's a dramatic development or sudden emergency, and it's a negative outcome to the scene. No. Well, obviously we break up, right? Yeah, I think that's pretty dramatic. Yeah. Like we're we we both get heated about. Um, things. Oh, is this the serial killer conversation? Maybe it is. Yeah. Like, I'm the psychiatrist. I would know somebody if somebody's a serial killer. Right. Like, I'm not the one that's lying to everyone around me. Yeah, and I'm not the one that's, like, only working with muscles. <laughs> it's like, you're not, you're not working with brains like I am. Or um, whatever. I'm probably not a good writer for these shows. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, okay. So we break up. Uh, that's very. Oh, wait, sad. no. It says a red card means things go the way you want them to go. Yeah, but I got a black card. Oh, I thought you said you got a red one. Okay. Nope. All right. Um. Okay. 
so that happens. Um, and then what do you, what did you get? Um, a... I got a seven, a black seven of clubs. Oh, so um, not anything that's an emergency, but not a good outcome either. Yeah. Um. So would this would be for the relationship as well, or did you want to do the patient? Uh, for the first one. Let's do yeah. Let's do a patient because I don't see if there's a reason really to like do relationship twice. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um. So like between is this me as a patient? Uh, this is uh you me as the with doctor. your you with your patient. Yeah, you okay. doctor with the patient. Um. So this is with your serial killer. It's a negative outcome, but it's not dramatic. Right. So after we've broken up. Um. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, so, like, I think I'm starting to, like, look closer. Yeah. And, like, maybe ask some more probing questions. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that he's starting to, like, think that I might know. Oh, um, yeah, that's good. So, like, it just, like, sort of increases the tension that Ooh. He, he thinks that I might I might be on to him. Yeah. I'm saying him because traditionally scary little killers are... <laughs> This, it's very traditional. I I I've been picturing like a uh almost a scrawny uh guy. Mm -hmm. Uh not really imposing at all, right? Yeah. 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 I think that would work out well. Mhm. Mm okay, so what is what is your pa doctor patient situation? So my doctor patient situation, um that one doesn't count cuz it's a joker, but I got a 6 of hearts. Oh, so it's actually going well. Yeah. That's nice to hear. The patient's um, responding to treatment. Yeah, I like that. So, yeah, the, the patient's responding to the treatment um, because I made sure that uh, they didn't get the placebo. Mm -hmm. um, so, and they don't know that I swapped them. Yeah. And everything. Um, and, and, and tainted the study, I guess. Mm. I know. I can't believe uh, you do. Well, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's good to see that they're they're turning uh, the right way. Um, maybe it's like a study on, uh, ironically, like concussions. Yeah. Uh, That's kind of what I assumed. Yeah. Okay. I like that. So yeah. then we've got one last relationship, uh, yours with me. Oh, yeah. I guess. So, so this is after we had the big fight about the serial killer. Yes. Okay. Oh, no. Uh-oh. I got a black jack of... Oh, you can't see it because I'm on my camera. On. Nope. Uh, jack of spades. Oh, no. It's another face card. It's another face it's card. A, our relationship is doomed. Yeah. Oh, man. I don't pick up the phone. You call, and I. you knew that I was supposed to have the the appointment with that patient. Yeah. And I don't pick up the phone. Okay. I like that. Oh, what and if... And now you're going to blame yourself. We don't know if I'm dead because that's where it's going to... like. Obviously. Right. What if I uh, overheard like a doctor saying, uh, what, what if I overheard a doctor saying that um, your patient was, uh, you know, like on the, on the verge and needed to, to see somebody right away and needed to see you right away specifically. Um, First of all, that's a HIPAA violation. I know, Secondly, it's, it's totally bad. Uh, but, you know, it's a medical drama. It's a medical so drama, so everything's a HIPAA violation. Yeah. So they, they sent him to your your house. <gasps> and since you're not talking to me right now, you're not answering my phone calls. And I'm trying to call you to, to say, hey, oh my God, this guy's on the way to your house. Oh my God. I'm going to get murdered. It's not going to go save you. End of season. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, what a good game. Yeah. That was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a really good time. I think we played the game again, though, accidentally. Well, kind of. I mean, we didn't go into actual role playing. We just went into summaries. That's and true. Stuff. Um, like in the, in the actual game itself, you uh, you actually role play things out. Uh, you answer some questions. So you would um, actually have to be Dr. Sports slash a serial killer. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, and then uh, you each story arc 
Uh, let's say, okay. So ending the game, keep your pro progress cards for your relationship to your left and your patient to your right. Each story arc is resolved when the combined total of your progress cards is 10 or higher. Oh. The color with the higher total indicates whether things end well, red, or in tragedy, black. Oh, wow. So you keep tra tabs on all these things. Fa face cards add dramatic twists, but have no value. Oh, I didn't so, keep mine separated. I didn't. Yeah, it's fine. So. But that's uh, what the value is for, at least. I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. Right, total. I guess that's with my character creation. Well, yeah, um, I think it. Yeah, I think it's without the character creation. Um, yeah, like, without the character creation, I only have black cards. Yeah, and I've got uh, a red six for the patient and zero points for our relationship. And you've got zero points, uh, but black for yeah. our relationship. And then black for my and patient. Then, yeah. Which is fine because he's a serial killer. He doesn't deserve a good outcome. I know. <laughs> it's true. Doctors treat everyone. They do. Uh, and maybe you can change them. And maybe I can change him. Maybe that's... Maybe that's. Maybe the, I can reach him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow. Well, that was a good time. Oof. I like it. I like uh, it a lot. That was a... Uh, that, that's a... Yeah, that's fun. You ready for a sharp tone change? <laughs> Speaking of sports medicine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this one's called Post-Match Interview. Mm -hmm. What's in a game? Yeah, this is a game by James Mendez Hodes. Um, it is uh, three or more players, so that uh, we'll see how that works. Um, and the you play as reporters and, and the athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, the tags are uh, sports for the genre. Tone is funny. It's GMless. Uh, the content is sports, surrealism, and improv. Have you ever watched those television interviews they hold with sumo wrestlers or football players right after the match? Someone with a microphone tries to ask the world's most tired human their innermost thoughts and feelings. The athlete returns with the most vapid answer possible <sighs> because all they can think about is drinking a beer and falling asleep. Mm -hmm. In this game, we'll roleplay a slightly more interesting post-match interview. Yeah. So uh, one player takes on the role of an athlete and the others play television uh, reporters interviewing them. Um, so I'm thinking for the for the purpose of this exercise, it'll be will be the reporters, right? Because uh, that's where the interesting stuff comes from. Yes. I mean, so like they create the questions and then the athlete would answer them. And I yeah. guess I suppose if we are not playing, then yeah, we could um, create our athlete. We could we, create we an absolutely athlete for could, us. Yeah. Um, together and then we can each yeah we'll create the athlete together and then we can do the reporter stuff uh for ourselves i think that would work out well i do think it'd be fun to like ask some of the questions oh absolutely we might just play this game <laughs> we, we, might. <laughs> we might just play this game um uh I know yeah, that so breaks we'll our rules goes. but okay it's fine. so let's let's uh make our athlete first because that's where it okay. starts let's make um, an athlete okay let's make some people Oh, athletes are people too. <laughs> That's true. Um, uh, we should make so, a shirt that says that, like, it's a, like blank are people too, and then uh -huh. like, like it should have like a list of options or something like <laughs> robots, cats, <laughs> mice, <laughs> um, goblins, okay. goblins. Yep. Yep. Uh, fold an index card in half on one side. Write to your character's full name and some details about the kind of athlete you are, perhaps your position on the team. Pitcher or goalkeeper, professional rank, uh, other identifying quality. Mm -hmm. Come up with a general outline of how the sporting event went and what you did. Keep it simple, boring even, and loose, since the reporter's questions will also contribute to the narrative. Whatever it was, it happened right before the, this impending interview and left you very, very tired. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's what we get for creating an athlete. Um, so... First of all, what sport are we uh, are we playing? Esports. Esports. Oh, lovely. Oh. <laughs> so I'm just like I. That's like the sport that I have on the brain now that my uh -huh. kid is doing it. Like. I love. So I'm it. like I don't know how to be an esports mom. Like not a soccer mom. I'm an esport mom. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, I love it so much. Okay, so we are an esports athlete. Uh -huh. What game do we play? <laughs> What's yeah? What game do we play? What game do we play? Like it's usually like they're like competitive games, but like 
Um, um, I think The Sims 4. Sims, the Sims 4 eSports? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't even know how that would work. Shh. Okay. Okay. Just don't think about it, it too much. Keep it don't loose. think about it too much. Okay. So we're <laughs> Sims 4 eSports. Uh, okay. Uh, and it's got to be a team sport, right? Yeah. So, like, you create a bunch of characters and they're all, all roommates. <laughs> oh, no. It's going to be. Yeah. So the team it's gonna, yeah. is uh, is some one person's at the controls. Uh -huh. And the rest of the team is behind you trying to tell you what you want. They want their character to do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what position uh, is this? The Is this the controller? No, this is left, left shoulder guy. Okay. okay so th this guy's left shoulder. <laughs> He's left shoulder guy. Yeah. This episode is going to be like uneditable. <laughs> okay, so so we've got a uh, left shoulder guy, uh, uh -huh. which is an official rank. Um, uh, yeah, so is there, we got to come up with a better word than guy. It's true. Um, uh, we like they'll just say left shoulder, right? Yeah, he plays left shoulder. Because you've in football, you got left tackler. Is that is that soccer? No, that's that's football. I don't know. Whatever. Um, yeah. So left shoulder. Uh, yeah, so there's left shoulder, shoulder uh, there's right shoulder, uh, mm -hmm. and then there's uh, above the head. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got three auxiliary uh, people, and then you've got the controller. Right. Uh, who is also a character in The Sims. Yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Um, what is the goal of the game? Well, the goal of The Sims is to... It's just like keep your person happy, right? Uh, keep your person happy and win at life uh, and whatever your goal wants to be, right? That's true. Can't you set so, one at the beginning? You say like, this is the thing that I'm... Yeah, I don't think we need to worry about okay. like what the real goal is in professional esports. Yeah. Uh, professional, e mm -hmm. professional Sims esports because that's up, up to the, the Sims esport commission right, uh, right. to figure out. Yeah. Um, and that's above our pay grade. What is the name of this team? Oh, God. Um, are these characters roommates or are they a family? Because if you're playing a family, then our Sims eSports team like should be named after the last name of that family. So, like, this is the Johnsons. I want it to be, I want it to be uh, roommates. Okay. Um, I is it a weird, like, similish word? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I, I was can't thinking, even, like, say uh, any of them. No. <laughs> Abu Dhabi. Um... No, for whatever reason, I was thinking the Bellas. Okay. Um, because like some sports movie has that as the team name, and sure. Uh, so th these are a group of people. Uh, they're they are uh, uh, like all women roommates. Okay. All the characters are women in the in the game itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, whether or not the players are, um, I imagine that it's a it's a mixed gender. Uh, esports league. Sure. Okay, so we've got. So this that. person plays left shoulder for the Bellas. Yeah, left shoulder for the Bellas. Um. <laughs> Sims Four esports team. <laughs> okay. Oh gosh, I'm sure our listeners right now are like, shut up. <laughs> it's fine. Hey, lean into your nonsense. It's okay. It's yep, yep, yep. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. So this person so, is really tired. Um, yeah. So so general outline of how the sporting event went and what we did. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, definitely. Um. Did we win or lose? Is that what the? No. Yeah. Just keep it loose. Oh, okay. Um Yeah. So. We gosh. did have a party, and it yeah. did go poorly because we forgot to put a ladder in the swimming pool. Yeah. But uh, oh god! But um, uh, our sim got got a promotion. Oh yeah, um, yeah. as well, which was nice. Mm -hmm. Um, and and leveled up uh, quite a bit on uh, what's a ridiculous hobby in Sims for? I was gonna say like learned several new recipes. Oh yeah, learned several new recipes. That sounds good. Okay, I like that. 
and and started a, a rank of podcasting. Okay. Because I know that's a thing in Sims 4. Is it really? I believe so. Mm-hmm. Actually, I'm pretty certain. Okay, you can I feel fact like check I played Sims that. 4 and it wasn't. So maybe it's later than that. I played Sims 4 and I thought it was. Maybe I didn't. Maybe it was a different one. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let's it say really it doesn't. is. Okay, so <laughs> okay. Uh, it might be one of the expansions that allows you to be a podcaster. Um, uh, yeah, and so this person's very, very tired because obviously, as left shoulder, you do spend a lot of time like leaning over. Yeah. And that's that's like really hard on your back and your shoulders. Mm hmm. Yep. Uh, plus, uh, uh, we locked our n- knees a little bit too much. Mm hmm. Um, so we lost a little bit of blood flow to the brain. Well, and as you know, a Sims 4 match can go on for hours. Days, uh, even. Days, yeah. Uh, it's just always one more turn. Because mm-hmm. um, it's it's an endurance match, right? Right, right. So it's whatever team is uh, is ready to throw in the towel uh, that that loses a lot of points for your team. Right, right. Wow, what a ridiculous esports <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's our that's our athlete. Do we have a do we have a name for uh, this left Wait. shoulder professional? Um, let's see. Let's randomly find one. Okay. Uh, Geraldine. Geraldine. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's a good last name? Um, I don't know why, but Fraser popped in my Fraser, head. Fraser would work because you're thinking of Geraldine Ferraro, the potential vice president that ran with. Was that back in the 80s? Yeah, it's not Mondale, is it? Oh, I don't remember. Now I gotta look. Okay, so Geraldine Frazier. Geraldine Frazier. <laughs> okay, so Geraldine Frazier uh, pronouns? I was Geraldine? right, it was Walter Mondale. Walter God. Mondale. I gotta not second guess myself on this stuff. Geraldine Ferraro was the yeah. running mate of Walter Mondale. Okay, nice. <laughs> Okay, uh, pronouns for was, Geraldine. Oh, Geraldine. Um, I was going to say she, her. Okay, that makes sense. And I was going to say that her nickname is Jer Bear. Jer Bear. Yes, please. <laughs> um, and and uh, her sim it mm-hmm. has a shirt with a little cloud rainbow on it. Cute, cute. Yeah. And khaki capris. Um, and one of, uh, one of her favorite... Uh, emotes is stare. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know if that's an option, but. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're going to yep. get so many angry letters about this episode. <laughs> it's like, you know nothing about The Sims. <laughs> I literally only played it a couple times when it first released and never picked it up since because it was so, uh, I'm going to have to say it, uh, inferior to Sims 3. In a Ooh, lot of different ways. It's a hot take. I know. Uh, yeah, it's we're gotten, really it's getting gotten, angry letters now. It's gotten a lot better since then, from what I understand. Okay. Uh, but I just can't uh, go into the the pit of The Sims anymore and lose out on all the hours of productivity uh, that I could have doing other things. You know what I started playing again? Roller Coaster Tycoon. Oh, no. Like the like very old like 1999 version. Yeah. The good um, one. Uh, yeah. Because, oh, like, you can get so it on the Switch and stuff. But somebody was talking really? to me about, like, they're like, oh, yeah, I have a friend that plays it, and it's super stressful. And I was like, dude, no, it's, like, the most chill game ever. You just, like, build roller coasters and stuff. Like, yeah. Adjust the prices. Like, jack up the umbrella prices every time it rains, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> I was <laughs> playing that so, this weekend for a little bit. <laughs> so you are a very not a... Uh, I'm a uh, ruthless <laughs> capitalist in that yeah. game. <laughs> That's the way to win. I am a roller coaster tycoon. Oh. You might say. Ah. <laughs> it wasn't that funny. <laughs> it was. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so now we have to come up with reporters. All right. Jer Bear uh, is getting interviewed. We've got some reporters. Uh, as a reporter, come up with a name. A new source you represent, and four questions for the athlete. Uh, write them down on your phone or an index card. 
Uh, your first question must be completely mundane, and the next three should gradually introduce some bizarre occurrence that affected the game, uh, such as an alien invasion, a supervillain attack, or a zombie apocalypse. Do we have to agree on? I think the you weirdness? don't. I don't think so. Okay. I think you just go. I think. Oh yeah, I think that the goal of the athlete is to like. There is a D10 table of weirdness too. Yeah, try and answer. And well, obviously, I'm gonna roll on the table. Don't be. Yeah. Right. So, so it sounds like it's it's just like uh, like the first one's gonna be just totally mundane about the normal event. Yeah. Like, tell us about the tell us about the match. Yeah, and then um, and then after that, it just gets weirder and weirder, and all these other weird things are piling on on top of each other. Um, mm -hmm. and whoever's playing the athlete has to like try and answer these while being extremely tired and having no clue what anybody's talking about because it's not like we just say there was a zombie apocalypse now i'm gonna ask some questions right um our questions get increasingly upsetting <laughs> all right so i'm gonna roll here yeah so um we'll take some time uh not for the audience but for us uh to go ahead and fill out some questions and then yeah. we can uh we can reconvene I gotta name a news source. Oh yeah. What's a what's a like a really outdated like aside from like newspaper, what's another like weird like Telegraph? Yeah, telegram. <laughs> telegram news news source? Yeah, it's on the world's premier esports telegram. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was thinking like telegraph where you you do the little Morris code. Mm. That seems a little too old fashioned though. Well, a telegraph is how you get the telegram. That's fair, too. Oh, yeah. Um, Only a extreme hobby enthusiasts get your telegrams. I want to be like an esports blog, but like specifically geared towards stay-at-home moms. <laughs> <laughs> that works. I'm going to name it S-A-H Esports. Premier online content. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it's actually going to be specifically for stay-at-home dads. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I need a name. All right, I've got my name and my reporter uh, house. I don't know what it's called. News source? Yeah, news source. There you go. <laughs> reporter house. <laughs> <laughs> I got That's sorted. <laughs> reporter house. <laughs> <laughs> is a blog with like reports about stinks. <laughs> <laughs> it's a like a food magazine reporter house. <laughs> oh, it's good. <laughs> I am oh, kind of proud of that. All right. <laughs> okay, so uh, the questions. I questions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So they've got some examples here. Um, like an okay question is. Uh, what did you do when the time machine appeared on the field? Uh, a better question is, how did the time machine's appearance on the field affect your defensive strategy during the second half? Um, yeah, so, goodness gracious. So just uh, up up the ridiculousness once it gets uh, closer to the weird questions. All right, I'm going to start rolling dice. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, I ran out of room for my fourth question. Oh, no. I'm only on question number two. I like, wanted to make adjustments to my questions, but like I didn't have room, so I'm like writing like tiny writing on the side of the... <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I have mine. I'm almost done. Okay, I've got mine too. Cool. So the question is, do we want to just read these off, or do we want to like take turns Oof. pretending to be... Uh, let's, yeah, let's take turns pretending. Uh, I think that sounds fun. We don't need responses from the athlete, because uh, that's actually playing the game, and we don't do that here. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's fine. Because we could each be the athlete. <laughs> I mean, we could too, yeah. How, what, what, where are we at for time here? That's not bad. We could, yeah. we could take turns being an athlete. Okay. Okay. What was our athlete's name? Uh, it was, uh, Geraldine Frazier, Geraldine aka Jer Bear. Jer Bear. All right. The left, the left shoulder. Yeah. All right. Who wants to introduce their reporter and ask the first question? 
I can do it. Okay. Hi there, Jody Keegan, SAH Esports, the premier online blog for stay at home dads. At what point did you know you had the match in hand? So now I have to, I now I have to see, um, ask the first one up the athlete whether or not they get follow up questions, but don't count on it. After answering one question, the athlete calls on another reporter and so on. Um, athlete, remember you're exhausted from a punishing day of emotional stress and physical intensity. Keep your answer simple, straightforward, and even boring. If you're unsure of what to say, fall back on generic sports maxims uh, about giving it 100%, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, uh, so what was the question again? Now that I know on it, where I'm supposed to be in a mind space here for this athlete. Mm -hmm. At what point did you know that you had the match in hand? Oh, you know, it, it was uh, it was cut and dry. Uh, it was it was hard to to see where everything was going, but uh, in that final stretch, uh, we really pulled it together, uh, and 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 I think we were uh, uh, we were we were better for uh, the stress that was caused in the first half. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, uh, Fred Billiams from the uh, competitive chapter for competitions uh, C three for short. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, how did you feel about the loss of two of your neighbors at the house party after your controller forgot to keep an eye on the budget and forgot about the ladder to the pool? You know, it's it's always tough. You you practice a lot, uh, but you can't prepare for every scenario that comes up in a match. Um, obviously, it's something that we will keep an eye on and try to work on for next week. But all you can do is the best in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jody Keegan again. Uh, it was clear during the 35th round that crowd control was an issue as a man in full body paint um, stood in front of your computer screen and sang the Peruvian national anthem. How did that change your strategy? Uh, you know, we, uh, we, we practice every day uh, to, to do things uh, with our eyes closed even. So uh, really, uh, hands up to the controller. They were uh, a fantastic asset to the team and uh, never lost sight uh, of the plays, uh, e even even without being able to see uh, entirely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Fred Billiams uh, from C3. Uh, so when the malicious mob began his assault on the facility, uh, things got a little dicey with the structural integrity of the stadium, but I noticed you shifted your weight from your, your right foot to your left instead. How did that affect your strategy going forward? I think you have to be prepared for any scenario, and um, it's in, it's always important in a match to be able to kind of change things up on the fly. You don't know what's going to happen at any given time. You can't predict how these things are going to go, so you just have to be ready to do what needs to be done uh, to help out your team. <laughs> Hi, Jody again. Uh, if Claudio hadn't been struck by lightning frying the original computer, do you think you still would have been able to get the invitations to that party out on time? You know, uh, it's it's hard to say uh, what things would have gone uh, if things would have happened a little differently. But, you know, we gave it 100 percent and uh, we were able to uh, kind of pull together at the last second. And uh, thankfully, the the strategy from uh, our, our right shoulder, uh, we were able to uh, get things taken care of uh, in a timely manner. <laughs> All right, uh, Fred Billions again. Uh, so I, I'm very curious, how long did it take to choreograph the song and dance number that your team broke out into during their time out uh, during the uh, karaoke outing? You know, everybody on this team gives 110%, 110% of the time. Um, it, you know, we don't, we don't care how difficult things are. You do what has to be done. That's, that's part of playing the sport. <laughs> Hi, Jody. again. Uh, just one, one last question here. Uh, how are you able to quickly develop a backup plan to cook that mac and cheese after your above Nelson was kidnapped by Dr. Millipede? <laughs> Well, you know, we we try to 
keep uh, an eye out for each other. We we've got uh, you know backup drills that we all do for in case uh, one of us happens to to get a little too exhausted, and we just happen to uh, be able to implement uh, one of our backup plays, uh, which uh, which really helped us out. Hi, uh, Fred Billiams again. That's Billiams with a B. Um, uh, yeah. So when the intelligent lemurs attacked during the last quarter, how did it change your plans when they eliminated your right shoulder? I mean, again, you do what you have to do to win the game. Um, I think it's really important for everybody to be aware of what's going on around you um, and to kind of just be able to see the whole picture. Um, and I'm, I'm really proud that we were able to do that today. Oh my god. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> what an excellent game. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh what, we lost what two kind players. Of lemurs was it? Uh, intelligent lemurs. Oh, intelligent lemurs. Yeah. Okay. So like Planet of the Apes styles with uh with lemurs. Okay. <laughs> All right, so did we, we had, both get did we both get supervillain attacks? I think we did. Yeah. Um mine was Dr. Millipede and he did kidnap Nelson. Yeah, I had malicious maw that was uh, attacking the f- structural integrity. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I also had natural disaster, um, okay. which was the uh, uh, the computer was struck by lightning and Claudio, yeah. one of our players. Um and then um I also had um oh, uh interference from spectators. Oh yeah, the, the guy singing the Peruvian national anthem. Yeah, I had uh, I had supervillain attack, son and dance surprise, son and dance number. I loved that question. I know. That was so and, good. And animal incursion. Oh my gosh, this game was so much fun. <laughs> like I would, I would play this again a bunch of times. Yeah, it's. It I is would really love great. to do do this one again for like some bonus content, but like a whole new sport. And mm-hmm. like, oh my god, we spent so much time coming up with the sport. <laughs> like, I know. Uh, I, I think this would have gone a lot quicker if we had just been like football, football, um, instead mm-hmm. of <laughs> deciding exactly how you play competitive Sims. <laughs> competitive but, Sims for you. Um, I, worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Uh, hey, esports! If competitive Sims Four comes in with uh, four player games, uh, and they're set up like we're talking about, I, I expect royalties of some sort. Yeah, absolutely. And also, we are more than willing to report on it. Um, I, <laughs> we've got the questions because I started to slowly develop an accent over the course of those questions. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah, so you you basically can go back and forth. You, there's follow up questions if you want. Uh, there's like a 15 minute timer, um, and uh, so people are allowed to do follow up questions. People are um, allowed to kind of uh, improv their way through, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, well, and normally one person is the athlete. Like, it's not swapping back and forth like we did. Yeah, exactly. Um, but we wanted to both be able to ask and answer these questions. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Yeah, so then uh, so then when it ends, so one of the reporters turns to the imaginary TV camera and makes an exciting prediction for the next game uh, and thanks the audience for the time, and then the athlete can finally go home and sleep. Uh, that's right. And that's, the, that's literally the whole game. We literally played the whole game. We did. Wow. And I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry either. It was so much fun. <laughs> first, t- first time for anything. Yeah. Wow, that's so good. It was That was so good. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like I don't have more. Normally we have like, you know, this whole discussion of like, how did this inform things? And, mm-hmm. you know, um, and honestly, I got to say, um, building our athlete informed literally nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this is it's supposed to, right? Um, and you know, we inhabited more personality in our reporters than uh-huh. uh, is indicated. But I don't know. Just, I mean, building our athlete informed everything because uh, well, we, because we, we built our own sport. We built the sport based on that. <laughs> <laughs> Although, yeah. yes, uh, if you had if, just picked football and been like, he's a left tackle. Yep. End That's very true. That's very true. He plays for the Green Bay Packers, and <laughs> they're the best team in football. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's post match interview. It is. And and that's all the games that we had planned for uh, this series. Yeah, absolutely. I had such a great time. I know that this was yeah. a little bit off the beaten path for us. Um, but I, this was so much fun and I'm really glad that we got a chance to kind of just sit down and do our own 
dumb thing <laughs> a know, little right? bit. <laughs> no. um, yeah, so these were all from the Ultimate Ar- Micro RPG book, um, mm-hmm. which is edited by James D'Amato. Um, yes. It has, like, f- is it 40 games 40, in it? 40 games in here, yeah. Um, so now you have seen six of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely worth checking out. I think it's it's a really great book. Yeah, um, and if you want to hear more of uh, our shenanigans uh, trying these out, um, we're going to start doing some bonus content for the one-shot Patreon uh, mm-hmm. for the $5 and up level. Um, and uh, we're going to cover one of these games uh, probably within the next uh, couple of weeks it should release. Yes, so that is us for this month. Thank you for joining us as we covered six games instead of one. Mm-hmm. Um, we will be back next month with another exciting game. Yeah, we'll see you then. Call to watch action. Yeah, like that. Uh, we had a lot of fun with all of these games, uh, but I really enjoyed our shenanigans this episode, especially. This <laughs> was so good. It was so uh, good. Uh, the medical drama actually sounds watchable. Vaguely watchable. Like we made something like <laughs> vaguely okay. <laughs> um, but that Sims 4 esports <laughs> league. <laughs> Um, uh, is, is probably our best creation yet. I mean, honestly, that <laughs> might be our best work today. Like, this is our crowning achievement. We will never top the Sims 4 eSports League. <laughs> uh, we might, but, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a high bar to reach now. It is. It is. Uh, it's only uphill from here. <laughs> Uh, but before we shut things down for the series and let you get to the outtakes after the credits, we do have a couple calls to action and one review. Probably our most important call to action right now is to check out the Akatacon Kickstarter. There's a couple days left. It would be really great for this project to fund um, if it isn't already. We're recording this ahead of time, obviously. Um, Ryan and I really hope to be there. We hope to see some of you there. There'll be a link to that in the show notes, but if you can help out or if you want to come, please check it out. Mm -hmm. Also, keep an eye on the One Shot Network Patreon, where we are going to be doing at least one bonus episode every month that releases there exclusively exclusively for those in the $5 and up category. Uh, The Secret Archive is home to a ton of great bonus content, including behind the scenes and world building for campaign, a ton of system mastery stuff, uh, as well as other bonus episodes others on the network have been releasing. Uh, It's really great stuff and worth checking out. Speaking of checking things out, you can check out the links in our show notes to our various review platforms. Leaving reviews on iTunes, Podchaser, etc. It helps us out in the rankings. It helps people find our show. You can also hype us up on social media. If you like what we're doing, please tell some friends or, you know, just tell us. Mm-hmm. We like to hear it, too. It makes us feel good. Um, <laughs> you can suggest us to other people looking for tabletop RPG podcast recommendations. You can join our Discord at discord.charactercreationcast.com. You can chat with us there. Mm -hmm. Um, We love when people interact with us about the show. We especially love when we get new reviews, which we then read on our show, like this one from Grizzbiz on Podchaser. By the way, great name. Mm -hmm. I love listening to this podcast because it's, it's great being able to take part of an unfamiliar RPG for a test drive before you get it. And it's nice to know that I'm not the only person that struggles with names. Keep up the great work, you two. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. I'm glad to know that I'm not alone. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is a real struggle. Although We should I... start a naming characters <laughs> support group. <laughs> I do have to say you've been getting better. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Like, uh, thank you. <laughs> I think progressively over the these years, you've been uh, getting better at uh, names on the fly. Um, uh, which I think I've, I've given up on agonizing over them the way that I do when I make a character for like a campaign or something. Yeah. Because like then it needs to be meaningful and you know like all this kind of stuff. And and with our show, it's like no, just 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 make a name that just sounds. Slap fun. a sticker on that baby. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Send it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, well, thank you for the review on Grizzbiz. Uh, that was the last review we had waiting in the wings right now. Uh, oh, I was I, on such a high note, and then you said that, and now I'm I know, sad. I know. I'm Why sad did too. You, you didn't like warn me that that was coming. <laughs> I have the <gasps> notes. 
Okay, you're. I didn't read all the way down. That's a, that's that's true. Um, but we love getting these uh, reviews, and we love reading them. Uh, we'd really love if we could have more to add to our calls to action every series. Um, and I know we would love to have some in general because it makes us feel good, and we feel sad when we don't have reviews. And hopefully, in this series, we have done something review worthy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, but for now, thanks everybody for joining us for this micro RPG series. We will be back in August with a regular series as long as everything lines up well for the recording. Uh, but until then, take care, everyone. Stay safe and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we got to read some show blurbs. 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 Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like Total Party Kill. Total Party Kill is a weekly live Twitch stream where John Patrick Cohen, Eddie Klinker, and James Dugan play through Cephalofair Games' Gloomhaven. Join them in the stream to play along through the action and interact with a constantly changing cast of characters and special guests. Or watch them after the fact on the One Shot YouTube channel. TPK airs Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central Time at twitch.tv slash one shot RPG. It is a bummer that no one hears my commentary about the clicky before we click. I mean, it's technically recorded uh, on the back of audio. Yeah. I could pull that out, but to, like, you know what? That's so much work. That's a lot of work. So much work for like two seconds of audio. Yeah. Maybe I'll do it. You can just say it again. Ye old clicky. Ye old clicky. Ye old clicky. Okay. So. Oh my God. Yep. I'm right there too. <laughs> I finally, like I slept last night and the night before. That's two nights in a row. Yeah. Which hasn't, I, I could not tell you the last time I got two full nights of sleep in a row. Oh, that's, uh, I'm glad that you did though. Uh, my kids got to bed at 1130 last night. Did they sleep in this morning then or no? Because they're children. Um, barely. I mean, Quinn did. He normally gets up at seven by himself and then gets on his tablet or goes and watches TV. Yeah. Um, and Olivia usually gets up at the same time anyway. Um, but yeah. Yeah, mine are old enough that they like don't get me up. They just get up and they play video games or something. Yep. Uh, that's, that's Quinn's age right now. Yeah. Um, it took. A, it feels like it took forever to get there because Nate's a super needy kid. Love him, but he's very needy. 
And so he would come in, like he would let let me sleep, but by letting me sleep, it meant come in every 20 minutes or so. Yeah. Um, or he would come in and check, when are you going to get up? <laughs> so I finally That's, set a uh, limit. And I was like, if I'm not up by this time, you may come get me. Yep. And then today, like now the recent thing has been, should I let the dog out? And it's like, the dog is fine. Because if you let her out, she'll scratch at my door until you let her into my room, which will then wake me up. So n- no, don't let the dog out. Um, <laughs> but this morning he still had to come and check. Should I let the dog out? And it's like, oh, fine, whatever. I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. <laughs> Who's letting the dog out? <sighs> Nate. Well, out. see, if, the answer uh, to that question. <laughs> yeah, if, <laughs> if, he's, uh, if he's waking you up every 20 minutes to check when you're going to wake up, that's just like, uh, Systematic power napping. Um, for who? For you. Because I'm not going back to sleep in between those times. <laughs> it takes me a long time to fall asleep. Like that's the problem with it. Is that wow. like I'm not a good sleeper. So like, see, that's the flaw in the plan. Then. Yeah, yeah. No, the flaw in the plan was having children in the first place. <laughs> if I really meant to sleep. <laughs> I love my oh. children dearly, but if I had intentions of sleeping, having children was not not a smart move there. Hmm. Welcome to parenthood, everybody. Uh, that yeah. is a parent. Uh, yeah. 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 I have children who don't. So, well, then I have Eleanor, though, who, like, you can't coax out of bed. Hmm. Like, you can't. I, I have to sick the dog on her <clears throat> to get her out of bed because the only thing that she loves more than sleeping is the dog. So that will work. But otherwise, mm-hmm. no. Nate gets, he gets upset if he like sleeps till eight o'clock. Mm-hmm. He wakes up and he's like, oh, I wasted so much time. And I'm like, you are 10. You have so much life left to live. <laughs> it's okay mm-hmm. if you miss two hours. Yep, exactly. <sighs> uh, let's make a podcast, I guess. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, it's just us, so. This won't be weird at all, no. uh, especially in games that we've never touched before. I'm sure it'll be fine. We'll figure it out as we go, and I'm sure that it'll edit to something beautiful. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Each episode is two minutes long. They're going to probably be a little bit shorter than our usual like hour and a half, two hour yeah, yeah. extravaganza. But that's okay. well, I mean, that's why we're doing it this way. <sighs> okay. Well, let's we'll go. Do a... Yep. Hmm. Don't do that. Top <laughs> it. All right. Here we go. Um, I got to shove this over to the side. There we go. And I'm trying to like talk here, but, but here. Yep. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. <laughs> All right. Uh, here come the fingers. Hopefully it's not too scandalous. No. It was just a bad dream. No, I'm talking about my dream. Oh. Ryan's going to tell us about his sexy dreams now. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. No, actually, Ryan's Ryan's scandalous dreams are about the time that he, you know, like, dreamed about embezzling money from... (laughs) I I guess guess we can just stop. Yes, you say, do you want me to stop and we'll start a new one? Yeah, might as well. Yay! Huzzah! Look at those wave forms. Like They're forming waves. Making waves with my forms. Wave forms. Yeah. <laughs> so jazzy. <laughs> that, was, that was really good. Some good freestyle. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's let's this get this taken care of and then. Yeah. Let's let's do it. Here we go. Okay. Fingers for the last time coming at you. All right. Bye-bye. Stop. I am recording. My recording is also recording. (laughs) 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 You started so strong there. You're like, my recording. Is recording. <laughs> you started out with such confidence, Ryan. You just had no follow through. I am so tired. It's fine. <laughs> oh gosh. I'm frankly like glad that we did this one just on our own because mm-hmm. 
I don't know. I don't feel like we get to do like other than the cold opens. We don't get to do much on our own anymore because we no, haven't we don't. been doing the. Uh, We've had a handful of Evolution Cast episodes by ourselves, right? Uh, right. And that's it. Which I almost like wonder if going forward we should consider doing most of those by ourselves. You know. Mm-hmm. Like as a way to make them sustainable. Because <laughs> otherwise necessary. it's, you know, trying to find time to record all that. That's true. Here come the fingers. <laughs> I love them. They're very smart. Great. I'm so grateful. I love my children so much. As my <laughs> Aunt Laura always says, Lord, help me endure my blessings. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so, in lieu, in lieu of time. Oh, yeah, I should probably stop my audio, huh? E waves. We did it. I we definitely got some, like, little background, little background bumpies. Little background bumpies? I got them background Maybe. bumpies. Your, your gain's probably up too high. I know, but it's, like, not. Oh, that's the weird. thing that, like, it's almost all the way down. Huh. I, it, might wow. be, it might be because I don't have the air conditioning. Like, I have the window open. Oh. Um, so it might just be, like, ambient. Some some outside background bumpies. Yeah, just like a little wind. A little wind. Whoosh. Oh, you know what it is? Hang on. Hang on. Oh. I know what it is. Oh. Mystery solved. Yeah, it was the ceiling fan. <laughs> <laughs> it was the ceiling fan. Well, I was like, like, is it the wind? Is it? But, like... Yeah. There we go. Now it's smooth as butter. Problem solved. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, chances then. are it will be eliminated uh, pretty easily. Yeah, but anyway. I knew it was there. Yep. I don't want anybody being like, ugh, Amelia, she has those background bumpies. <laughs> it might be contagious. <laughs> <laughs> those, those weird waveform That's a podcasting bumpies. STD is the background yeah. bumpies. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> is that a sound transferable disease? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's a sonic and technical disease. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's background bumpies. Background bumpies. You do have All to right. disclose that on your <laughs> on your paperwork. <laughs> So should we uh, sh- should we get started and get some foreground pumpies going on? Oh my God, Ryan! <laughs> what kind of woman do you think I am? <laughs> oh. oh my God! Uh, yeah, they're calling probably... waveforms, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Oh, uh, you're welcome, outtakes. <laughs> oh, gross. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what would your wife say? <laughs> She'd say, hurry it up. We got errands to run. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, Ashley. Oh, uh, uh, it's fine. All right, let's do the thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Okay. Game face. All right. Do, do, do. You were sleeping so nice. Go back to sleep. So I was... Do, do, do. What am I doing here? Starting the next section? Yeah. Um. Yes, this should be fine enough. I wanted to balance it out more, but I'm like, I don't care anymore. It's fine. Um. All right. Call to action. Whoosh. One shot RPG, and that's at the five dollar level. You get access to the secret archive. Oh, so one shot RPG, one shot podcast. Oh, you're right, Ryan. Your notes are wrong. I know. <laughs> um. So one shot. Ugh, I can do this <sighs> because you should follow the correct link to find the things. <laughs> <laughs> um. There we go. Now we can stop. Hey. I did it. Huzzah waveforms. Yay, waveforms. Yeah. And they're not bumpy because I turned my fan off, which is why it's so hot in here. <laughs> you so know what, cra- though? I'm so um, crabby about it. I'm so okay. crabby. It's like 80 degrees outside. And right. It's humid. And- if the fan is 
better for your well-being right now. Nah, it was ex- okay. it was extremely easy to remove that fan sound. Like, well, that's because I turned it off last time. So well, no, really I'm saying on. before the point before you turned it off. Oh, I see. like it was on the recording, and I was like, let me see how easy this is to remove, and it was just like gone and didn't really do anything to your voice. So, for whatever that's worth, if you want to be a little bit more comfortable. Okay, then I'm definitely going to turn it on. If it's not going to be that big of a just deal, I'll do turn it, it on. Oh my God, like so seriously, hot. the 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 volume, yeah. or the the not the volume, the hertz, the wherever I don't know what that's called frequency. The frequency there you go. of that's the fan cool. is lower than where your voice starts, so yeah. I can just trim out that whole frequency and below, and and it's gone. I just don't want bumpy waveforms, you know. I mean, that's that's fair to not want bumpy waveforms, but they're just background bumpy, so it's fine. Although today I don't have them. Hmm. Well, there you go. Maybe, uh, maybe my gain's not as high, or maybe it's because we messed with the microphone and plugged it into a different USB. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? You got this. Uh, Even if it's there, it's easy to get rid of. Just gonna scream. Just gonna. We shall, we shall prevail together. I won't scream because you'll have to edit this later. I know. I don't want to hurt your ears, but I, I appreciate that. Ah. There you go. I'll just, I'll just do some <laughs> upset growling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, that's one way to work it. Um, <gasps> awesome. So we got two games. I've got my. It's my book. Here it is. And I got Sentinel Comics in the mail today. Uh, for spoilers for next series, I guess, for those in the outtakes right now. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, I just started a game over the weekend that like Justin put together. And he was like, it's just like the three blood mages I know and put us in a room. And I was like, they're like, what territory do you want? And I was like, well, there's the one I want. The I want Necropolitan Hill. And I was like, that's where the guy is buried. And he's like, oh, can we put our ritual chamber here? And I was like, the book says very specifically you're not allowed to do magic there. So, yes, that is where we're putting our ritual chamber. <laughs> Just a bunch of rule breakers. I know. I know. I'm very excited for this game. That's amazing. Ugh. Anyway. All right. Uh, shall we make a podcast? Let's make a podcast. Let's make a podcast. All right, I I will uh, do a countdown and uh, and get going. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Uh, well, we just released one, so it's probably next month. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> uh, but oh, actually, by the time this comes out, you know what? Delete all this. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Editor James, cut that down. Yep. Um, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, and then we can stop this one, right? Do you, yeah, do you want to stop or do you want to just tack the cold open onto it? Uh, right let's stop and do a fresh, because okay. that'll make it easier, easier for my brain to function. Stop oh. it. Clicky. It's a click and a clack and a clicky clack clack. Did so much clicky today. So much clicky. Wow, so, such clicky. Wow, such clicky. Okay, here we go. I'm going to do, I have a camera now.